What is going on everybody? Welcome to a brand new realistic rebuild series, Rebuilding the Miami Dolphins. We are going to do our best to create a new era here in Miami with head coach Brian Flores. We are moving on from Adam Gase and this rebuild is going to be, I think, much more difficult than the ones we've done. You know, we did Oakland and we had a bunch of picks and then we did New York and we actually had superstar talent, Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham. Well, in Miami, not so much. We don't really have any superstars under the age of 30. We are probably going to be moving on from our quarterback here as we enter the offseason here. So it's going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be our most challenging rebuild yet. So just like all of our rebuilds, this will be a realistic rebuild, realistic trades, team building, uh, roster construction, everything. Trying to do our best to replicate what I might do if I were in charge of Miami and how I would go about rebuilding this team. As far as gameplay, we will do, uh, you know, we'll go into our fifth season and then I will do two games of offense, two games of defense only, and then two games of just the fourth quarter. And then we will do two or three a year of my play the moments where I do three play the moments within a single game with a maximum of one full drive. Now, before we get into it here, please guys like this video, like every video. If you're following this series, it is the easiest way to support the channel. It really helps spread these videos, grow the channel, and I can not thank you enough in advance for that of course comments I like in interacting with you guys I, I like taking feedback and, and often implementing it into these videos and then the other thing I want to plug here before we start and while I have your attention if you are into realistic Madden 19 content to the degree that that is possible with this game whether you are familiar or not with my 32 man online franchise TFGO I wanted to get this out there that A, we are recruiting for the wait list right now. I will place the application for that in the description of this video. And if you just wanna follow more rebuild content from me, more realistic Madden stuff, well, that is a whole online league of it. And I do all of my games on my Twitch. So make sure you follow me on Twitch. That is twitch.tv slash that franchise, guys. So let us get into it here, the Miami Dolphins. And we are jumping in exactly where we are right now. And my goal is to get this video up before the conference championship games tomorrow morning. But regardless, it will be fun to see who wins between the Patriots and the Chiefs in Kansas City and the Rams and the Saints in New Orleans. So that is going to be the first thing we do here in this rebuild. Before we advance, I will show my gameplay sliders because those questions are inevitably coming. So here they are. I'll let you guys, you know, pause, go through this implement them whatever you need to do with these these are my sliders and we are on all madden with regular game speed i'm playing eight minute quarters for the sake of time but um i, I recommend you know 10 11 minute quarters with that clock run off to about 20 and then the speed disparity is at 60 or maybe i had it at 58 one of the two. And then my XP sliders are all at 100, except for offensive tackle is at 130. And then offensive guard and center is at 135. Other than that, it is at 100. So nothing else to do here, but advance, head towards our re-signing stage. This first video is going to be all about the off season, almost like a mock draft for the Dolphins and really a whole mock uh, off season, even though the free agents aren't gonna be perfectly replicated here. So it looks like the Chiefs and the Rams is the Super Bowl. So we'll just keep moving here and see who wins the Super Bowl in Atlanta. The Rams, 42 to 28. Okay, so re-signing period. Jawan James, definitely want to sign him. He is, you know, one of, you know, the better right tackles in the league. He's the ninth ranked right tackle. He's not asking for nearly what he's going to in real life. So we are going to pay him closer to what he's going to get in real life to replicate that. Um, I think he'll get about $8 million, uh, maybe seven and a half. So we will definitely up this, uh, maybe make it a four-year deal. Uh, you know, he's a good player. I wish this game were better and gave a more realistic contract asking price, but it's not. So 7.64 million over four years, and he's coming back. So that's a big re-signing. Uh, the one nice thing about Miami, outside of some you know young defensive studs, I wouldn't say stars, but studs, uh, is we do have two tackles to build around, uh, which is definitely an issue uh, to try and find that tackle depth, uh, or even starting tackles, rather. Uh, other than that, 
Um, I might try and bring Kendrick Norton back here for a cheap one-year deal, but nothing crazy. Undrafted rookie out of Miami that we poached from some team. I can't remember where he ended up in real life. Well, he is on the Dolphins now, but uh, he's going to go try a different team out. That's fine. Um, so, you know, I, I think all these guys were, were good to let go. Glad Dan Heyman told it was just a one-year deal. He regresses pretty hard. So let's go ahead and get to the next stage and we can think about trades here. Uh, so we're gonna try and kind of replicate what I, you know, it's hard to say what Miami is going to do in real life because this is a front office that has been very unpredictable uh, in terms of their moves over the last couple years. But I think they're going to try and rebuild this thing instead of, you know, kind of settling for mediocrity, kind of retooling the roster every year to win seven to 10 games. I think they finally recognize that Ryan Tannehill is not the answer. They need to blow this thing up uh, and increase the ceiling of this team. Uh, so that is what we're, we're going to try and do. We want to win a Super Bowl in the next five years with this Miami team. So we got some decent pieces on defense to build around, but we are going to need to collect young talent early and we are really going to struggle in the first year, I think. So let's start and just look at the free agency pool before we think about trades here. So at quarterback, is there anyone we could come in? So at quarterback, is there anyone that we might bring in to start uh, as kind of a bridge quarterback if we were to move on from Tannehill? Um, you know, maybe Teddy Bridgewater, we bring him back to Miami. That's definitely intriguing. Uh, he grew up in the Miami area as far as my understanding goes. So we'll think about one of those guys. Running back, we got Kenyon Drake, we got Kalen Balaj. I think I'm, I'm set to let those guys uh, kind of play out. I don't think we really need to invest in that position, at least in free agency. Uh, we got some a pair of versatile guys there at wide receiver. We got a bunch of dudes here. Um, you know, we're definitely going to need to address this position. But for now, between Albert Wilson, Kenny Stills, we still have Devontae Parker. What do we want to do with him? Tight end, we got Mike Gesicki and uh, Durham Smythe. So probably going to stay put here. We don't want to blow our load. We, we really want to clear up cap space. We, we could use someone along the offensive line, maybe Jason Spriggs. We could move to guard. The idea of signing a center does appeal to me, certainly, um, to, you know, if we're going to rebuild this offense, I think having a solid offensive line should be a focus point. Uh, so I, I do think we're going to come back and spend on some of those guards, but I want to... Um, explore the other options here david irving is an intriguing player that d line is kind of a strength for us we could use uh definitely some d tackle help i think so maybe like a danny shelton andrew billings could be interesting uh, I, I could see signing a d tackle there or henry anderson could actually be a really good d tackle signing for us because i like davin godshaw but other than him I, I would like to have an upgraded d tackle right away i think Linebacker, we got two exciting guys there. Probably don't need to sign anyone there. At edge rush, we're pretty good currently. Uh, corner, we could certainly use someone. We could take a chance on Jason Verrett to try and uh, spark his career back up. At safety, we do need, well, we do have TJ McDonald, so we're probably good at safety. We'll let someone else get Landon Collins. We're not quite in a position where we want to just splash for a free agent like that. One player that's going to be very interesting for us is going to be Minka Fitzpatrick. We're going to use him as that nickel back. So he'll kind of bounce between corner and safety. I am going to leave him at corner for now because he's going to be our starting slot corner. So at just 26 years old, I'm going to make a one-year offer to Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, $13 million. We'll see what he thinks about it. Um, if, if he starts getting offers, I may or may not uh, continue to go after him. Wide receiver, I'm going to leave it be for now. Same with tight end. And then lineman here. I am going to sign Jason Spriggs if I can, a flexible player there who can play uh, guard or tackle. And then I'm going to make a run here for Mitch Morse because it's, it's pretty rare to have a good lineman like this on the market. So we're going to give him a pretty decent offer of 6.5 mil a year over four years. Uh, and sure enough, he does like that. And then George Fant's another intriguing player. He can play tight end. He could play guard. He's 6'5", he's athletic, so, you know, he's just a decent, versatile player. I wouldn't mind just making him a part of the team here. Can do some interesting things with him in power formation, so I'm going to give him an offer. I'm going to make a little run here for Henry Anderson. A 
plug him right in there at D tackle, get a, an athletic guy that can move around. And then I think the last piece I'm going to make a bid on here is Eric Rowe, former Patriot that we've seen uh, here in Miami. So a two-year deal for Eric Rowe. We'll see if he likes that or not. So Mitch Morris, Henry Anderson, Eric Rowe, Teddy Bridgewater, George Fant, and Jason Spriggs. This would be a good class. Uh, we'll see if they sign. Let's go. So we get Morris, Fant, Anderson, and Eric Rowe. So we still have some negotiations to do, but uh, really all the free agents we wanted there. I don't know if we lost anyone. Uh, no, we did not. So Spriggs, we're still up there on Ted, Teddy Bridgewater getting offers from the Buffalo Bills, but I think we can outdo that. Uh, we just want a one-year deal here, so we're just going to give him more bonus. I would think he'll like the opportunity here, uh, as opposed to sitting behind Josh Allen and living in Buffalo uh, when he can come home and live in Miami. So how about 16 mil for a year? There we go. And then I'll up Spriggs just a bit here. And we got him. So a complete free agency class. We're able to bring in some players to help us compete. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a huge splash. Nothing too crippling. Kind of reminds me of what the Browns did uh, before they went 0-16. You know, you bring in some pieces that can kind of help bridge things over, which is what we're doing. Especially with, I think, that Mitch Moore signing, the Henry Anderson signing. You know, these guys are, are going to be you know, maybe low-end players on a championship team, but for now they're a really nice bridge. And speaking of bridge, we bring in Bridgewater to be our bridge quarterback. And that will bring us to the draft. And I think we should think about trades before the draft, maybe do some trades during the draft. The first guy, myself, and I think all of you are thinking about is Ryan Tannehill, 31 years old. Just has not been the guy for us, but maybe someone else could be intrigued. He's got two years left on his deal. He doesn't have a ton of cap hits, so we can definitely get rid of that contract. It presents a cheaper deal for a team that might want a good backup or uh, an upgrade. You know, maybe Denver would be interested in this move. So I'm thinking about Denver or maybe, you know, New England could make sense here. Definitely a team that needs um, something in that quarterback room. Um, I usually wouldn't go inner division, but it's not like we're really scared of, of Ryan Tannehill starting for the Patriots. If anything, we might be happy about that. Um, it looks like Tom Brady did retire, so I, I think this would actually make a lot of sense. We can increase the asking price because it is interdivision, so maybe a third round pick for Ryan Tannehill, and they liked it. So we pick up a third round pick from New England. We're kind of out from our quarterback, so that's a good move there to get some value. Normally, I, I don't know if I would trade that third round pick, but in the Patriots situation, they're not going to be looking at a really good quarterback there, having just played in the AFC Championship. So to get that quarterback for a third round pick, I think is a good move for them. It makes sense for us. We do still have Josh sitting, sitting here. I uh, did not mean to do that, but that worked out pretty well. A little pun there. But we have no guard talent, so we're going to have to keep him for now. We might even start uh, George Fant at guard. And then we have these old edge players here. Robert Quinn... Cameron Wake actually retired, it looks like, so we're not going to get anything from for Wake. And then just kind of going through the rest of this defense, I don't think there's anyone we really want to trade. But let's get to the draft. The focus here is going to be on getting an impact player, whether it's on defense or offense. We need a blue chip player on this team. We need a superstar to build this team around. Unfortunately, we're picking, um, you know, like 13th. So it's going to be tough, and we're not going to just sell the future for one player because we're not a player away. So we might have to get that blue chipper next year, depending how this draft plays out. But regardless, let's get into this draft. The Cardinals are on the clock, and the Cardinals with the first pick take Ed Oliver. Not a huge surprise there. And then the Raiders taking Nick Bosa, so they get their Khalil Mack replacement. The 49ers will take Rashawn Gary. With the third pick, the Jets going Jonah Williams. Good pick for them. Um, so some quarterbacks falling here. Uh, I actually would love to get Kyler Murray here for Miami. I just I think that'd be fun. I, I don't see that as a, a really unrealistic move for them. Uh, a high upside, you know, high risk, high reward pick like Kyler Murray. Um, and Byron Murphy goes number five to the Bucks. That's actually what I mocked. 
Um, so the Giants here at number six, they might be thinking about a quarterback. And the Jags as well at number seven. So if I'm going to get my quarterback, this might be my chance. There's always, um, we actually end up with a 15th pick just because of how I can't force ties. So the standings are actually a little different. So, uh, you know, I'm going to offer my first this year and a first next year. So at 15, you know, it's, it's tough because I would actually have to offer my first next year and next uh, and this year, and that's still no guarantee. We can certainly risk that they go with a, you know, a different position. If they do take the quarterback we want, that means that um, some potentially blue chip players are going to fall to us. So I, I don't think we're in a position to kind of mortgage the future for a quarterback, especially when there are good quarterbacks in future classes as well. Um, I, I'm really hoping that Kyler Murray can fall to us or at least fall a few more picks. But if it happens, it, it happens. Um, so Greedy Williams goes to the Giants. So they're going to stick with Eli Manning. And then this is a big pick right here. The hope is that they go with Dwayne Haskins at quarterback. But Josh Allen is still there. Quinnen Williams is still there. Claylin Furl, uh, Devin White, Riley Ridley. There are still some really good um, options here. And, you know, um, kind of trading down if those elite guys aren't there couldn't be the, the worst thing in the world either. Uh, so let's see what happens here. The Packers actually somehow ended up with the eighth pick. Uh, okay, please don't be Kyler. Oh, they take Dwayne Haskins. So we know the Packers aren't going to take a quarterback. Wow, Josh Allen to the Packers. The Lions probably will not take a quarterback. Devin White. The Bills, I would think, will not take a quarterback, but who knows with this game. It's definitely a little scary. Now, we don't necessarily have to give up the future here, uh, a future first to get this pick, I don't think. It's just five spots. So let's see what they think about my first and a second. Trade accepted to move down five spots. I like it. And we also just saved the computer from taking a quarterback, which I had a feeling was going to happen. So the Miami Dolphins, we already paid Teddy Bridgewater for a year, but we've got a quarterback, Kyler Murray, five foot nine, absolute burner, but he is not just a scrambler. He can throw. He is going to be kind of our Russell Wilson prototype here. And um, the idea is he can hopefully come in and make the players around him better. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun building this team around Kyler Murray. And we didn't have to give up the future for him. So if he's actually not good, then we, we can in two or three years actually move on from him. You know, we only gave up a second round pick to do that. So I'm very happy with that. Let's keep going just because we are kind of in mock draft season. Just see what, what these teams are thinking. So a, a new elite D tackle for the Bengals to put next to Geno Atkins. That would not be fun to play against. Um, the Broncos thinking tight end. That's a pretty bad pick. Uh, Zach Allen, I like that to the Panthers. That's a good pick for them. Riley Ridley, the Browns getting a really good receiver. Uh, the Bills take a center. After they trade down, they might get the best pure lineman in the class. Um, another linebacker to the Redskins. That doesn't make a lot of sense with Reuben Foster there now. Uh, corner to the Falcons, corner to the Eagles. Yep, that would make sense. A, a new receiver for the Titans. They need that. Oh man, another guard for the Colts. That offensive line getting Dalton Reisner is going to be nasty. The Ravens taking a receiver, Calvin Harmon. I like that. Uh, the Steelers, a new receiver, Debo Samuel, with Antonio Brown getting older. I, I don't think they traded him. Uh, left tackle for the Seahawks. Paris Campbell to the Raiders. They get a receiver, Greg Little to the Vikings. That is a great pick for them. They need help on that line. Josh Jacobs to the Raiders. They get the best running back in the class. Uh, new D tackle out of Clemson for uh, the Texans. They got like three of them now. Uh, yep, the Chargers, Christian Wilkins. They could use a D tackle. And how about that? Daniel Jones to the Patriots. So it's going to be a quarterback competition there between Tannehill and Jones to um, take over Tom Brady there in New England. Irv Smith to the Packers. That will be interesting. I have him in the TFGO League. And then the Chiefs getting DK Metcalf. And the last pick in the first round, Caleb Wilson, a tight end to the Rams. All right. And then just one more pick there, Marquise Brown to the Cardinals. So we're going to skip ahead to my next pick. We got two picks here in the third round. 
and I'm kind of thinking guard uh, would be big for us. Ja'Kai Polite. Uh, a lot of these, you know, defensive players I have not gotten around to um, updating. I'm definitely still in the process. You, you've noticed, you can notice some of these are, are updated to um, the more modern, up-to-date views on these players. Some of them are more closer to the preseason views, so Ja'Kai Polite maybe a little lower than you would expect on this, but uh, we do need an edge rusher, Brian Burns. Again, um, I act I'm actually not very high on him at all um, just because he's so light, but that would be another player. Uh, on the edge that would be good for us. We could go with another safety. Definitely a big need for us. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson out of Florida could get us some youth at that safety position. So I'm between him and Drew Samia out of Oklahoma. Uh, I, I think we need to go with the guard. Uh, just a harder position to get. And a 22-year-old, quick development mobile dude so he's gonna start right away at guard so that's a good pick for us and we do have a, another pick here in three picks so maybe we can still get Chauncey Gardner Johnson Will Greer to the Bills Jarrett Stidham to the Bengals oh darn Gardner Johnson just went to the Broncos okay so we are up again and Ja'Kai Polite is still there so is Brian Burns and you know what I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna take O'Shane Zimenez, we do need another edge guy uh, to start opposite of Charles Harris, who is finally going to get his chance. And a 73 overall quick. I actually didn't know he was that good on my roster. Um, but he's going to start right away on the edge. So we've got an intriguing duo here with Zimenez and Charles Harris. This defense definitely is going to be our strength if we have one early on. Uh, the offense is, is going to be a little more questionable. So here we are in the fourth round now. I'm kind of thinking about safety or guard. And I think I am going to go with guard Lester Cotton here. Uh, he'll probably start as well. 70 overall. Nice. Kind of a mauler. But that means our offensive line is, is kind of filled out for now. So let's keep moving here. Thinking about a safety now for sure. So Dakota Dixon, I feel like we take him a lot. Isaiah Simmons, I, I won't cheat. He's a he's a, a star player there. Jordan Fuller is an intriguing player. I kind of want that rangy free safety. I kind of want that rangy free safety type. And I know I take Dakota Dixon a lot, but he does fall. Um, but I think we might actually play him this time around. Uh, so we're going to take Dakota Dixon out of Wisconsin. Uh, pretty solid pick there in the fifth round. Injury concerns, but a good player if he can stay healthy. Okay, sixth round, maybe we think about an offensive weapon here. Gaskin is, is still available. I, I kind of like our running backs, though, for now at least. And I really don't like many of these receivers at all. I don't feel like I'm um, using a pick on that position. But how about a versatile fullback? A guy that can play special teams. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to use my fullback, but uh, he's actually not very good. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. He'll he'll make the team for a year and then probably end up getting cut. But it's all right. Just a sixth-round pick. Um, don't really know if, if we were going to pick a starter at that pick anyway. Uh, and then our last pick here. How about some linebacker depth? Keeping Shaquille Quarterman in Miami. Fast dude. Uh, 64 overall. But uh, definitely will contribute on special teams and could play in a pinch if need be. He's got pretty decent coverage ability so I'm definitely happy with that his overall will go up too once we move to outside in our 4-3 scheme uh, so that's the draft I am very happy with that first draft that is is gonna set us up exactly where we want to be so sorry for Teddy he's gonna have to sit again because I think Kyler Murray's gonna win that job we could certainly sign some depth at halfback could probably use another wide receiver another tight end I think with drafting a couple good guards here with Cotton and Samia or Samia, uh, I think we can go ahead and cut Josh Sitton. I don't think anyone's going to trade for a 33-year-old guard, but I think that's fair to let him go. Uh, the question is, who do we want to start at left guard, Cotton or Samia? I think I'm going to start Samia. It's not like it really matters. Um, you know, you kind of spread out the strength, I suppose. Between Cotton on at right guard and Laramie Tunsil at left tackle, those are going to be our kind of maulers. 
and then at defensive end. Robert Quinn, you know, it'll be interesting what we want to do with him. He's probably just going to take a, a rotational role for now, and maybe we just cut him or do something else with him. Charles Harris, we're going to go ahead and play at left end, and I'm going to fix him so he's not so chubby. I'm actually just going to add four pounds to him because he's ready to start now. He's kind of sat, taking his time, but now he's ready to start. Quarterman's actually a 68 overall outside. Uh, we'll probably start him over Kiko Alonso, at least in base. Uh, and then at corner, you know, we, we've got some some decent pieces there. I'm hoping Xavier Howard can really take a big step in this, this year. And then at safety, we've got TJ McDonald. We've got Dakota Dixon now. We've got Rashad Jones. So I, I think I'm actually going to be playing Dakota Dixon as more of that center fielder type. You can see he's much better at that than these guys who are older and slower and um, don't have the range. So we'll, we're going to start Dakota Dixon. We'll, we'll put TJ McDonald at strong safety. And, you know, we're going to get really versatile with what we're doing with McDonald and um, Fitzpatrick there. So I'd say that's long enough for our first episode. When we come back, and we will be right back. I'm going to try and get this next episode up ASAP if you're watching this live. But when we come back, we'll skip through the, well, not skip, but we'll get through the preseason as quick as possible and then get to the action here with Kyler Murray and the Miami Dolphins. So hit that like button, guys. Cheers as always, and we'll see you next time.